I said the question, are we among those that we stand in the gap? Are we among those that we stand for the truth even when every other person denies Christ? You will not deny Christ. I will not deny Christ in Jesus' name. Among the signs, brethren, you will see preachers that are influenced and possessed by the spirit of the Antichrist. And that is why today, many of these ministers, false ministers, they are actually what? Representing the Antichrist. They are foreigners and they prepare the way for the full manifestation of their master. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. And that is why we must be grateful. And the Lord has helped us to be in a commission that depends solely on the word of God. We must hold fast to that word. We must not put our trust in man. We must not put our trust in human beings. Because human beings can fail. When challenges come, human beings can turn their right. They can drift left and right. But somebody that stands on the word of God, the sound doctrine of the Bible, that one we stand the test of time. I pray we will remain faithful. I pray we will remain watchful. I pray we will remain holy. And I pray we will remain prayerful in this end time. And when Jesus Christ comes, the coming is very imminent. You will not be found wanting in Jesus' name. Quickly, we look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, verse 32 to 34. Resisting deceivers and antichrist in the last days. Matthew 24. I read from verse 32. The Bible made us to understand here. It says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, Know that it is near, even at the doors. When you see all the signs, as we can see today, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Brethren, times of signs of the time are everywhere. Signs of the time are everywhere. Point number one: the dangers of Antichrist in this last days. What is the danger of Antichrist in this last day? Let's look at Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. I read from verse 9 to 11. This is a wake-up call for us as believers. That if we have been slumbering, if we have been sleeping, you know, it is time to wake up. It is time to watch and pray. It is time to be closer to the word of God than ever before. It is time to be nearer to the fellowship of the saints than ever before. Because at this time, the spirit of deceit will be will be flowing left and right. I pray you will not be deceived in Jesus' name. Daniel 8, verse 9. The Bible says, And out of one of them came forth a little arm, which waxed exceeding great, toward the south and toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. Verse 10. And it waxed great, even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground, and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself, even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Daniel 7, I read from verse 24 and 25. The Bible says, And the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and sing to change times and laws. Can you see that? And they shall be given into his hand until a time, and times, and the dividing of times. I pray the Lord will open our eye to see the revelation of the word in Jesus' name. The apostle in our text reveals the emergence of the Antichrist in the last days. Daniel also revealed it in his prophecy. The personality called Antichrist is referred to in the Bible as the son of perdition. He is a man of sin. He is a king of fierce countenance. This man will oppose Christ. He will oppose the teachings of Christ, the command of Christ. He will blaspheme the name of Jesus Christ. And he will try to change the plans of God. This Antichrist Part of his duty will be to outlaw the worship of God and solely oppress the children of Israel. 
However, even now, we can see a lot of antichrists around us. You can see very clearly some of these so-called men of God, acclaimed men of God, the things they say, the kind of preaching they portray, you can know this one is not of God. Of course, some people will tell you, some of their members will tell you, judge not. But the same Bible says you have to judge. You have to know them by their fruits. And we must be very careful so that we are not deceived. So that we are not carried away by all those gymnastics here and there. Many people have been caged in the cage of end time, in the cage of deceit, just because of the quest of wealth, or because of the quest for health, or the quest for good life. They never know the privilege they themselves have to come to the throne of mercy. They go there, they watch the gymnastics, and they are carried away. Brethren, we are in the last days. There are backsliders, this antichrist, even today we have them, and who, what do they represent? They represent the backsliders who have become reprobate. They once knew the Lord. They once stood for the things of the Lord. But they were careless. And the devil took advantage of them. And they became backsliders. And they became reprobates. They became degenerated to apostates. And even graduated to become antichrist. I pray we will hold fast to what we have. We will not, we will not allow the devil to drift us away from what we first knew and embrace, and we will not go back to our vomit in Jesus' name. They are opposed to Christ and the truth of the scriptures. They can argue for you. Those are the ones that finally become apostates, and they can argue against the word of God. We must be careful if we have such as friends. We must be very careful. First John chapter 4, verse 3. Let's look at what the John the Beloved said. First John, First John chapter 4. I read from verse number 3. We must be careful. We are in the last days, brethren. And in these last days, many, many, many will be cut down. Verse 3 of First John chapter 4. The Bible says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. The, the, the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. That is why you must be careful. You must fortify yourself with the word of God, the truth of the gospel. Faith of our fathers will always remain in our hearts. And help us to stand to the very end. The grace of the Lord be sufficient for you and me in Jesus' name. Let's look at Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. Know you every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is not of God. Second Peter chapter two. I read from verse one. The spirit of the Lord will open our eyes, and we shall see in Jesus' name. Verse 1, the Bible says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately, privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, that brought them, and bring upon themselves sweet destruction. Sweet destruction. That will not be our own portion in Jesus' name. Brethren, the foreigners of the Antichrist, they operate by the spirit of the devil. They are antichrist because they are deceivers who oppose and distort the truth of the gospel. These people, they misinterpret the scripture and the doctrine of Christ. They are hostile to the salvation that comes through Christ alone. They are wolves in sheep clothing. Some of them may be very good. They may be, you know, uh, philanthropists. They may give and do all those things. But that is not what, you know, Spells out somebody that is in the, in, the, in the faith. Praise the Lord. The devil also can he transform himself to an angel of light. So anything can happen. Don't be deceived. They preach and spread errors. And damning lies of Satan. Why many see them as Christ's servant? Because they come in sheep clothing. Because they do good works. They are actually working against Christ. Characteristically, Antichrist are known for denying Christ. Simple as ABC. 
Number two, they are known to desert the church. And they are known to deceive Christians. I want to ask you a question today. Have you been deceived or have you fallen a prey to the deception of these men that call themselves men of God in quotes, but rather they are actually antichrist, you know, doing the work of their father, the devil, and deceiving many actually to what to believe in their powers. They catch them and rather than what allowing Christ to be the centrality of the ministry i pray god will help us that by the grace of god our eyes will be open we will be able to discern and at the end of the day we will only stay where the truth of god is expressly spelled out and preached in jesus name point number two the devotion that abides till the last day what is that devotion that will abide till the last day and christ himself wants us to imbibe such kind of devotion in our personal life in our quiet time, in our family devotions, in our family life, in the church of God. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Brethren, let's look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 26. The book of John the Apostle, chapter 14. I read from verse 26. The Lord wants believers to abide in the truth of what we have learned. Brethren, as children of God, we have the anointing. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. And this power of the Holy Spirit inspires us. If you are truly true to yourself and you believe and depend on the truth of the word of God, the Holy Spirit will inspire you to recognize the truth. That is why if you are still sound in the faith, when you see a false prophet teaching, you can discern. You can know that this is not what the word of God teaches all. This is not the command of my father. Jesus said, I must do the work of him that sent me. Be it in the night, be it in the daytime, we must hold on only to the truth of the gospel. Even if the minister will come and the minister preaches so sweetly, you can still detect the error that is there if you are with Christ. I pray we will not be deceived. I say we will not be deceived. The power of the Holy Spirit in us will be activated. It will help us to recognize the truth and enable us to live only by the truth of the word of God and not by all the gymnastics and drama going on in the Christendom today in Jesus' name. John chapter 14, I read from verse 26. The Bible says here, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And everybody said, Amen. Let's look at verse chapter 16 of the same John. Verse 13, the Bible says, Albeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. You see that? If you want to know a false prophet, if you want to know an antichrist, they are always full of themselves. Even though they mention the name of Jesus, as he said, Jesus himself said, said some of you will say unto me, Lord, Lord, we prophesy in thy name, we did this in thy name. We pray in thy name, but he will say unto you, Depart from me, I know you know, you because of iniquity. When self is being glorified, than Christ. I tell you, just forget about it. Those people, they are not for Christ. He said, The spirit of truth will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Praise the Lord. And he will show you things to come. Today, the prophets we have in this world, the first prophet, they prophesy only the things they know will make people to be afraid and, you know, do all things possible to get the healing. You can imagine see people praying and, you know, saying that, well, need a deliverance now. You have to pay the money for salt. You have to pay the money for all these things. And people are there being deceived. What a terrible situation, brethren. What a terrible situation. People behave as if they are orphans, spiritual orphans, as if they don't have a father. And I tell you, we have a father. And our father is able to actually what? To deliver us. He's able to provide for us. He's able to take care of us. We must beware of the false prophet. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Look at chapter 8 of John. Chapter 8, I read from verse 31. 
John 8, 31, the Bible says here, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my word, my disciples indeed. I pray we will continue in the word of Christ, who will abide in this truth of the gospel which we have learned, which we have had all these years, and by the grace of God, the Spirit of God will teach us all things. I said the Spirit of God will teach us all things. And we will please the Lord so that at the end of the day, we will make heaven in Jesus' name. Believers do not need erroneous and misleading literature of false prophets and teachers. We can only be identified as Christ disciples when we continue in His word. Brethren, when you see something is wrong, when you see something it is not glorifying Christ, and they give it to you, you know you reject it. Yes. So that you don't support the flow of their ministry. You reject it. And if possible, as the Spirit of God leads you, you preach Christ to them. Equip with knowledge of the truth from the books of the Bible. Believers know enough that we take them to heaven. Of course, especially when you find yourself in a commission of truths. In a commission that dwells on the pure word of God. Such as the ministry we find ourselves. Brethren, we are enjoying a lot in this ministry. And many people that are outside and are not in Bible-believing ministries, they are actually what? They are being malnutrited with the word of crowds. But here, the word is what we eat. And yes, John said some of this word can be bitter. The truth is bitter. But that bitter pill is what we actually want make a difference in our life. It's what we cleanse our soul and cleanse our heart ritually. And at the end of the day, we can say thank you Jesus. Brethren, we must be equipped with knowledge of the truth of the word of God from the Bible itself. We must have enough that will take us to heaven. We must be satisfied with what we have, where we find ourselves. We must not quest for more knowledge from the devil. We must refrain from those who have the spirit of Antichrist. We can know them we abide in the truths we have learned already. The Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, brethren, in wisdom, in all teaching, and admonishing one another, as we are doing now, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Praise the Lord. When we are saved, when we say we are saved, it will show, it will reflect in our devotion to Christ. How devoted are you to Christ? That is why Jesus Christ came and asked Simon Peter. Say, Simon, that son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? Jesus is asking the question as well. How devoted are you to the things of the gospel, to the things of the kingdom? Are you promoting the kingdom of Christ? Or are you are promoting self and flesh? Brethren, when we are saved and we are genuinely saved, it will show in our departure from deceivers and antichrists. The grace of God keeps those who are genuinely saved in the truth. If you say you are depart, if you say you are saved in the truth of the word of God, the grace of God will keep you. And that grace will be reflected in your life, in my life, from today henceforth in Jesus' name. However, if we depart from the truth, brethren, we do not abide in Christ. We do not abide in grace and we do not abide in salvation. You see, when you deny Christ in doctrine, in character, in lifestyle, before the world, it will result in being lost forever. And it is a great foolishness that when you have known Christ and the power of his resurrection, and then because of the things of this world that will pass away, you do what? You give yourself to the devil. It's like you are going back to your vomits. It's like the prodigal son that have been enjoying grace and said, look what, I want to be disgraced. I pray we will not put our own hands into the fire of disgrace. In Jesus' name, the Lord is there to preserve us from every form of antichrist, from every spirit of the devil. We will not be lost forever in Jesus' name. We are still in the time of grace. We must not abuse the grace of God. As many backsliders who do not properly return to the Lord, they will eventually be lost forever. They will eventually be what? Be overwhelmed by the spirit of the Antichrist. But I will have a good news for us as believers. The spirit of the Lord shields and preserves us from error. 
He dwells in our hearts. And it acts as the built-in lie detector. Praise the Lord. If your spirit is active, give thanks to the Lord. That's built-in lie detector in your life, in your heart, that has been built in by the Holy Spirit of God will preserve us from the error that is drifting many into the dungeon of fire in Jesus' name. Let's look at Colossians 3, verse 16 and 17 before we go to the last point. Colossians 3, verse 16 and 17. The Lord will help us. Committed to the faith, committed to the war, we will never deny the power of God. Committed to the word, committed to the word, we will never deny the power of God. Colossians 3, verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It doesn't say let the word of theology. It doesn't say let the word of literature in you and all those news here and there. The word of Christ. That is the centrality. Let it dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with what? With grace in your heart. You must ask God for the grace that will be indwelt, that will help us to what? To stand for the truth. In verse 17, it says, And whatsoever you do in word or deeds, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, and the Father by him. And the church of God says, Amen. Very quickly, we look at the last point. Our destiny at his appealing, appearing these last days. Our destiny at Christ appearing these last days. What is our destiny? What is our destiny? Look at our text again. First John chapter 2. Our anchor text. First John chapter 2. I read from verse 28 and 29. The Bible made us to understand. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. We will not be ashamed before our own Savior at his coming in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. In verse 29, if you know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of Christ. And we are born of Christ. We are children of God. We are children of God. And the scripture reveals the secret of continual victory. Fellowship with the Lord. And confidence at Christ's coming to be what? Abiding in Christ. You must dwell with the Lord. Just as the chick, they know, they have to dwell under the wings of the head, of the mother head. So that they will not be what? Devoured by the enemies. We are in the last days. And the enemies of the gospel are more than ever before. We must hold on to the truth. We must hold on to the word of Christ. The word that restores, that delivers, that sets us free from sin. And we must not be selfish. As we know this, we must help as well as many that are lost to draw them into this umbrella of Christ. Into this umbrella of truth. Many people have been deceived today. Their eyes have been blinded. They have been seared. Their conscience have been seared with hot iron. We must stand in the gap. The Lord is looking for laborers that will stand in the gap in this end time. We are in the last days. The perilous times have come. Even the very elect have been deceived. I ask you a question. I ask myself a question. Are we going to leave ourselves like that and give ourselves to the devil? No wonder they said, the psalmist said, Will thou not revive us again? Oh Lord, we cry for revival in this end time. Make me an end time revivalist that by the special grace of God, I will spread the gospel through all means. Social media, spread the gospel. In your colleague, your groups there, spread the gospel. The gospel of Christ must reach every heat and corners of the city. In our smaller unit, we must spread the gospel of Christ. The Lord will count on you. The Lord will count on me. In Jesus' name, look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Colossians again, 
I read chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4. The Bible says here, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are both. That is the centrality. What is your your, your, your affection for? Are you, are you actually loving the things of Christ? Are you loving the things of, of the kingdom? Where Christ is on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. Not on things on the earth. The things on this earth will perish. They will be destroyed. They will be burnt with fire. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. I pray the Lord will hold our earth tight. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Then we also will appear with him in glory in Jesus' name. The scripture reveals the secret of the continual victory, fellowship with the Lord, and confidence at his coming. Like I told you, it is the abiding in Christ. You must abide in Christ. You must abide in his word. If you want to partake in the rapture of the saint, which is very near and is very imminent, we are called to readiness now. And not tomorrow. Don't be like the foolish one I would say. The foolish virgins that what? They say, we will we, 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 we what? We will buy the oil later. Later we will buy the oil. They never thought of the danger that could occur before the later. And that is why I must tell us today, many of us, we are already sleeping. We are already slumbering. We are already carried away by the normality of the world. The Lord is calling us today to be awakened. The Lord is calling us today. He's still looking for men that can stand in the gap and rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming very soon. The uniform teaching of the scripture is that the coming of the Lord will be sudden. It will not be announced. However, there is a call to watchfulness in the Bible. I say, watch and pray for you know not the time, the hour, the minute when the Lord Jesus Christ will come. I say, He's going to come like a thief in the night. That is the more reason why we must be very careful. We must be very conscious. We must be watchful at all times. We are required to constantly watch, to constantly stand in awareness and readiness. As believers, because when Christ, who is our light, shall appear, it is our readiness that will make us appear also with Him in glory. Christ is coming again. There is no two way about it. However, as we await His coming, we must abide in Him. We must remain faithful to the end. Christ will soon appear, my brothers and my sister. And only those who are made righteous through His shed blood and preserved by faith in him will be received up to glory are you saved are you delivered tell the lord to help you we need the grace to stand we need the blood of jesus christ to be activated in our lives so that we can be preserved by faith in our conviction we must hold fast that which we have once known that which we have learned we must hold fast our conviction we must not allow the deceiver that are littered around to shift our focus, to distract us from Christ, the center of our salvation. Christ has given it all on the cross of Calvary. He has shed his blood for us. What more do we need than to be faithful unto him than to hold him till the very end? Walk with Jesus. He, is re he has released himself. He gave us his hand. He said, walk. Come, let me walk with you. That is why we must be like the song that I said. Come walk with me. For the road is rough and narrow. Oh, come walk with me. I cannot walk alone. For the road is rough. And there are many dangers, daddy. Come walk with me. And you will give me rest. Brethren, the Bible says, Hold fast which you have till he comes. And behold, I come quickly. Jesus said that. His reward is with him. To give every man according as his work will be. The only question I ask for all, Will you be ready? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Will I be ready, brethren? Will you be ready? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? A wake-up call indeed. A timely one. Revelation 2. 
Revelation 2, verse 25. A timely one when people are dying anyhow. When things that are, you know, they don't look normal, are happening. Young people are going. Old are going. Children are going. The, the middle age are going. Everyone is going gradually. The signs are everywhere. This, the desertions, the everywhere, terrible things are happening all over the world. It is a time to wake up. It is a time to be more righteous. It is a time to be more holy. Look at the pandemic, how it is degrading and dealing with nations of the world. Including where we find ourselves today, you can see. People are being caged. It is a time to be nearer and closer to the Lord. Revelation 2. I read from verse 25. The Bible says, But that which ye have. Praise the Lord. I'm grateful to God that we even have something. How many people in this world, they don't even have anything to hold on to. But thank God we have something to hold on to. But that which ye have. Already? Hold fast till I come. We will hold fast that which we have till Christ comes to take us home. Or till the rapture takes place. If Christ give us the privilege to be around during the rapture, we will not be left behind, we will not be lost forever. In Jesus' name, the pleasure of this world, the pleasure of sin, is only but for a moment. Christ is coming. Eternity is forever. We will not miss the beautiful side of eternity in Jesus' name. Just imagine after all the struggles on earth, after all the suffering in this world, then we still miss heaven. God forbid. I say God forbid. In the name of Jesus. Finally, before we pray, Revelation 22. I read from verse 12 to 14. The Bible says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. This is the words of Christ in red. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do this commandment, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gate into the city. Finally, I ask you a question. What is your work with God? W-A-L-K. And what is the significance of your work? W-O-R-K for God. It must be balanced. We must work and work with God faithfully. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. This must say, Father, I have heard your word. Thank you for speaking to me this word, the revelation of your word. That the time, or the signs of the time are everywhere. We must be able to resist the deceivers and the antichrist in the last days. We find ourselves now amongst them. They are everywhere. They have taken over the pulpit. That is why the Lord is the Lord is, is, is asking, is looking for people that will stand in the gap. Revivalists of the end time that will spread the gospel of Christ through every means possible. Oh Lord. Help us. Tell the Lord to give you the grace to be able to discern, be able to resist deceivers, be able to resist the antichrist that are among us already in the last days. And the Lord will help you to be a soldier. Lord, we help you to be a, 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 a general that will help others to also stand and be repented unto Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mighty Father, we thank you for your word. The word of God is true. It is a sharp two-edged sword. It pierces through the heart. Thank you for speaking to us this morning. Lord, I just pray and ask that we will not just be hearers of your word, but will be doers of the word in Jesus' name. Give us the grace to resist the deceivers among us. Give us the grace to resist the false prophet, the antichrist, in these last days in Jesus' name. Lord, many people have been deceived. A lot of people are in their crowd of these false prophets, false teachers, and the teachings are very, very shallow. We can easily see that they are teaching false doctrine. For those people that are in their, in their congress, in their, in their congregation, they are blind. Oh God, we cry and intercede. You will open the eyes of the blind believers today in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the kingdom of God will be populated and the kingdom of devil will be depopulated. Give us grace to stand. Even in the land we find ourselves, we pray you will help us. In these critical times, the devil will not come nigh us. The devil will not be able to touch us. We will stand firm. We will stand strong to the very end in Jesus' name. We commit this week into your hands, Lord. Take over. 
Jehovah take over and grant us the reason to smile evermore, to rejoice evermore. There shall be testimony even in time of diversity. Thank you because I know you have answered. Blessed be your holy name. Grant us favor. Grant us breakthrough. Open doors for us financially, academically, any area of our life, career-wise, even in our families. Touch everyone in Jesus' name. The arrow of the wicked will not befall any of us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, as we go, go with us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have a blessed day, a blessed week, in Jesus' name.